if there's no mechanization, agriculture is very hard labor. I mean, you you have to prepare your field with uh, simple tools. Uh, you have to do weeding, harvesting, uh, even transport by hand. I mean, uh, maybe with a small, uh, maybe you have a bicycle, but not much more. So, um, without tools, implements, and maybe small machinery, that is what mechanization is all about. Uh, farming is totally unattractive, really, specifically for the next generation. The, uh, and I think the, um, the countries of Sub-Saharan Africa cannot afford to lose uh, it, uh, the youth interest in farming. Embracing and adopting more sustainable mechanized farming methods is a way for African farmer to grow enough food to meet the increasing demand for a growing population. Nobody should advocate against Africa mechanizing because uh, we must be competitive. Africans need to develop like everybody else. Africans need to increase productivity. We need to produce more food so that we substitute all those importations. And the only way that I can see that we are going to succeed in doing this is by mechanizing our agriculture. The second reason why we want to mechanize agriculture is that um, it's similar to the first, which is the Agenda 2063 itself, which is Africa's vision, the, the Africa that we want in the year 2063 is saying that the continent must be self-sufficient in food production, it must mechanize agriculture, agriculture must not only produce food for the population, it must also produce incomes for the people and reduce poverty on the continent. The industry has uh, always needs some safety for their investments. And I think in African uh, countries, African states, uh, in some cases the security or the safety is not that much as they expect, so they hope and help, get help from the government. And so in this case, it's necessary at the beginning. But from the economical view, in the future, it's important that this is a private business, not a public business. It has mainly been the government uh, playing the supportive role. We must change that. We must bring the private sector on board. Uh, talking of the private sector, of course, there is the farmers who are investing, but now we realize we need to go more business. We need to attract uh, the service providers. These are farmers who are farming themselves, but also who can uh, acquire machines that uh, provide a service to their neighbors. So far, the public sector and the private sector are working completely separately in terms of promoting mechanization in Africa. And uh, mechanization is a system. You need to have some public goods like research, uh, training, basic infrastructure. And you have also the private sector that will need to, to bring in the technology and you know, put these machines uh, for the farms to you know, acquire them. The government provides us a, a, an inducive a, a regulatory framework. It gives a security framework. It gives you um, confidence to carry on and uh, carry out the activities and knowing that at least you are safe. Okay, so that's very, very important for government. But also government can help the farmers and mo to mobilize and sensitize farmers to, to uh, provide extension services which can be provided through uh, Ministry of Agriculture or it, it, in some cases privatized, but at least there is somebody who can talk to the farmers about farming and so on. And that needs to be done consistently. It doesn't depend which, uh, which model you use. It's very important that the farmers establish this model by themselves. Only when they establish that by themselves, they will be convinced on this model and they will have success. My concern is that it's important to, first of all, think out your strategy and your so-called business model, how mechanization should work. And then in the end of the day, um, <coughs> The, the procurement part is, is, the, is the smallest part. It's really make a service, make mechanization service working. And it's better to start slow. I mean, start small, and because it, in order to avoid big mistakes. So it's a bit better to be slightly more patient and go smoothly. I mean, a bit slower, but smoothly. So we have experienced many, many different ways in, in, 
in implementing BB, BBPs, private partner partnerships. Um, many way of, of innovation uh, different in different scale, but one single thing from our side, from the private sector. We need concreteness and results. This is the, re what the request from the private sector. We cannot uh, drag things too much. We have to be concrete in terms of obtaining results where we uh, implement our uh, activity. This is what we, what we need, this is what the private sector requires, otherwise it's a question of survival for us. And I would like to make a quick question about the objective number six regarding the standards and certification. If you are thinking of mechanizing your farm on the basis of uh, this uh, CA as well as uh, this mechanization model, that uh, uh, local after sales service and uh, involvement of the local people, local visionary manufacturers, is, is the key to this thing. We need uh, to give credit to uh, uh, the patrons, to the, uh, the, the, the participants who have come from 27, uh, 28 countries across the world, uh, the majority being from Africa itself, who have uh, spent their time to, to, to come and contribute this agenda, but more so to the Kenyan government for, for hosting uh, this event. It, we held it in Kenya, as you know. Um, of course, the leadership of FAO at the World Bank and, and, and uh, UNIDO and the other private sector, sector partners is, is also uh, sincerely appreciated. We only need the right environmental setup. We only need the proper business models to take the agenda further.